Richard from Brazil made Alia three years ago. And what are you doing here today? Today specifically, we are volunteering, helping to order the, the uh, clothes that people donated mm -hmm. to, to give the people that need to receive it. Wow, because there's people of need. And today's newspapers are telling us about an increase in Alia around the world. All the major Jewish Alia organizations got together in the last few days for heavy-duty meetings for a wave of Alia that they're expecting around the planet. And you're already in prep because you're realizing if many people are going to come, some with not a lot of things, they're going to need things to wear when they get here. And so it's really, really important that we do our little itty-bitty part, uh, Jew and non-Jew, working together to help bring the Jewish people home and help absorb them in the land and perhaps give them a little softer landing, correct? Yeah, it will be easier if it's soft. How was it soft for you? Uh, it wasn't so soft for me, yeah. but it was better than it could be, so wow, wow. I'm grateful. Wow. Here we are in Tel Aviv in a place where there are many people in need, great need of even clothes. He, oh, he he studied at the Ben Chumi. Ben Chumi. To, yeah. to, to, to uh, so we did, yeah. You oh. gotta connect to them. It's amazing as the Alia Return Center to be able to help. I'm translating. Welcome to the uh, to the um, social uh, community health center. community center. I'm Ismail Barka. I'm from Darfur, Sudan. I realized I really connected to helping my fellow man, and so I connected in the national service for a year. So I went and I looked around South Tel Aviv to the area that's very uh, very impoverished, and I saw the need. In order to connect to Israel, you need to learn Hebrew. So that's what I do on that whiteboard right over there. I teach them Hebrew, and uh, these are my students right here. Wow! So the help that you've been able to give is not only to help the people here of South Tel Aviv who are very much in need, but even other refugees or potential uh, potential refugees, people that are in need, will also get help. And even in across across uh, to areas in like uh, North Africa, places like Chad and so on. We'll get it. Now, do you have any memory of what happened in Darfur and all that? Is that has that affected you? Is One of the things that really affected me coming from Darfur and uh, understanding how much trauma uh, the citizens there experienced. My dad was head of his village, head of his his village, and he saw his leadership. But I discovered his leadership, his kindness, his desire to help other people. My own father, though, eventually was killed right in front of my eyes, along with my brother. Uh, in Darfur, and uh, and I, even a few years ago, I wouldn't even be able to speak this in public, but now uh, I've, I've under, uh, now I'm able to share. It.